Today I'm going to be taking a quick first look at the recent release of Seduction. Seduction, for those of you not familiar with this Linux distribution, is based on Debian's unstable branch, which is called SID, hence the name for this distribution, Seduction, right? So it's kind of a play on words, that's Seduction spelled S-I-D. And uh, this particular distribution is one that I've loved playing around with in the past. It's great as far as if you want to install Debian Unstable. Now I've shown you guys how to install Debian Unstable using Debian's expert installer, the Incursus installation program that comes with Debian. But if you want a graphical way of installing Debian Unstable using the Calamaris installer, Seduction may be the right distribution for you. Now today I'm not going to go over the installation process with Seduction because it's just a very plain Calamaris installer. If you've used the Calamaris installer on any distribution before, you know how that particular installation program works. They don't really do any kind of extreme customization with their installer. You just download the ISO for Seduction for the desktop environment you want to use for their ISOs. I believe they offer a few different desktop editions. I chose the KDE Plasma desktop for purposes of today's video, but they also have an XFCE edition as well as a LX Qt edition. I think the last time I took a look at it, I took a look at the LX Qt edition. So today I wanted to switch it up. I'm going to take a look at KDE Plasma. Of course, they will be on Plasma 6. So I've already run through a quick installation. The installation process takes about five to 10 minutes. It's your standard Linux installation using the Calamaris installer. Now, one thing to note, when you install Seduction, obviously here in the KDE edition, you would expect them to be defaulting to a Wayland session because these days KDE Plasma defaults to using Wayland, but they're actually using X11 as the display server. So what you wanna do probably is go ahead and change over over to Wayland. Now the reason they had X11 as the default, they had some issues with the Calamaris installer on Plasma in a, a Wayland session. That's why they were defaulting to X11, but I would probably recommend trying out the Wayland session unless you have some issues with Wayland. So that's what I'm gonna be taking a look at today. Let's go ahead and log in. Now this particular version of Seduction, they have codenamed Shine On dot dot dot. And I believe this particular code name, Shine On dot dot dot, that is the name of a Pink Floyd album. So uh, I guess the person that uh, named this obviously is a Pink Floyd fan, which I think is kind of neat. One other thing with the wallpaper here that is code named, you also have a little Santa Claus hat as part of the uh, Seduction logo. Oh, my mouse cursor has become very large, but you guys have told me that that is actually a feature now in Plasma. I, I guess I can turn that uh, mouse zoom thing off. But yeah, you've got the uh, holiday themed wallpaper here. Of course, we can change the wallpaper. We may take a look at some of their default wallpapers later. But for now, why don't we take a look at what they install out of the box? Because obviously Seduction, although it's based on Debian, they are not just shipping, you know, typically typically vanilla packages. They theme things, you know, they, they tweak Debian a little bit. So let's see what they have installed out of the box. So I'm gonna go into the menu system. Let's just go through the categories here. So under development, not much here. We have Kate, which is our text editor. Kate is a really nice plain text editor, obviously designed to work in the KDE desktop environment, but Kate is so good. Uh, many people use Kate as a plain text editor, regardless of what desktop environment you're running. Kate has a lot of neat features, all, all especially if you're a programmer or a scripter. It's got all your syntax highlighting and it's got like your side mini map and all of that neat stuff as well already built into it. So really neat little text editor. Under the graphics category, we have Flameshot. Well, wow. so that is a screenshot utility. It's interesting that they chose to install Flameshot because KDE obviously has its own screenshot utility but they've chose to go with Flameshot. If you launch Flameshot, nothing happens. It actually is a sys tray program. So you'll have Flameshot down here in your sys tray. And when you click on it, uh, you could have options of you know various things. You could screenshot which application, which monitor, or you could just draw on the screen with the cursor, the square or rectangle section of the screen that you're trying to screenshot. Really neat little utility. Also under graphics, so we had GIMP installed, GwynView, which is KDE's image viewer, Image Magic, which is a dependency for a lot of this stuff. Inkscape is installed as well. Let's see what version of Inkscape we're on these days. Inkscape is not a program I use very often. Let's go ahead and open a new document here. Go into the menu system, go to help. 
about Inkscape, and this is Inkscape 1.3.2. So Inkscape is for your scalable vector graphics, you know, your SVG graphics. Uh, for raster-based graphics, you probably want to stick with GIMP instead. We also have our K Color Chooser and our Color Paint Tool. That's color with a K. These are uh, KDE programs, K Ruler. We also have Ocular, which is your document viewer. That's uh, basically a PDF viewer. And then we have Xsane, which is a scanning utility for those of you that still have need for a scanner. And you know, some printers still to this day do have built-in scanners. Uh, if you're one of those people that still use printing and scanning it seems like that's kind of a, a a thing of the past nobody really prints stuff like we used to it used to be every single computer was connected to a printer and you know, everybody was just printing all this paper and thankfully for the environment you know i'm not into like an environmental nut but it's, it's kind of insane when you think about how much paper we all used to print back in the day under the internet category we have aggregator with a k uh, that's your kde's uh, news feed reader so if you're one of those people that love RSS feeds, Aggregator is a program for managing that stuff. You also have Firefox as your default web browser. Let's go ahead and see what version of Firefox we're on. Now, this, of course, is rolling release, right? It's based on Debian's unstable branch, which is rolling. So it's going to be very bleeding edge software. But know this, I did not update after the installation. So this ISO is about 10 days old. There will probably be newer versions to some of these programs. Right now, though, the ISO shipped with... Firefox 133.0.3 64-bit. Also under the internet category, we had IRC. Now that's a generic name. That's actually conversation with a K, I'm, I'm assuming. Conversation with a K is the default IRC chat client for KDE. Let's see if it actually connects to like a default uh, support channel for seduction. Let's see. I'm not exactly sure if it's actually going to do that or not. Yeah. It's, so it's irc.oftc.net and the channel name is hashtag seduction. So that's neat that when you open it, it defaults to a proper seduction support channel, which I, I think more Linux distributions probably should do. Makes it a little easier for people to get support if they need it, especially if they're running through like an installation of your distribution and something goes wrong. Also under internet, we had cast with a K. I'm assuming that's a podcast application. Uh, it's just weird how they name these things with a K. Uh, yeah, looks like a standard kind of audio player, but I guess it's designed specifically for uh, managing podcasts. And you've got a bunch of other various K utilities under internet, such as your uh, K mail, which is an email client. You have K Git, which was a download manager, KTorrent, your BitTorrent client, yada, yada, yada. Uh, really, a lot of small little standard KDE utilities. Under multimedia, we have the Dragon Player, which is your video player, and we have Elisa, which is your music player. We also have Juke with a K, also as a music player. Interesting that they include both Elisa and Juke. Let's actually take a look at Juke. Go to help and about Juke, and this is Juke version 24.12.0. Looks like a standard kind of music player. Uh, you've seen one music player, you've seen them all. It's just strange that they include two default out of the box. We also have K3B, which is your disc burning utility. So if you're still one of those people that burns CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays, K3B is probably the best it's a free and open source software for burning disks. And I, I love K3B. I install it on all of my computers because I actually still occasionally do have the need to burn disks. Some other things we have MPV and SM Player. Uh, MPV, I think, is a dependency for SM Player. But it's interesting that they, once again, include uh, multiples of things because why do you need these video players if Dragon Player really is your default player? And it was interesting when I jiggled the mouse around it gets big I, I, I thought that was a bug the other day I, I was reviewing a different kde distribution i was wondering why my mouse cursor kept becoming gigantic i guess that is a like a, an accessibility kind of thing like if you're uh, having a hard time finding your mouse just jiggle it and your mouse will become you know gigantic right that's kind of a neat feature now that i think about it i actually don't hate it under the office category we have uh, a lot of the standard uh K office application. So we have K mill, contact with a K, K organizer, but we do have the full LibreOffice suite. We have base, calc, draw, impress, math, and writer. Let's take a look at LibreOffice writer. Let's see what version we are on. So let's go ahead and dismiss the 
release notes announcement and about LibreOffice. This is LibreOffice 24.8.4.2. To LibreOffice, just fantastic piece of free and open source software. One of the most popular pieces of free and open source software on the planet. It's basically your free and open source version of Microsoft Office. It's not exactly 100% compatible with Microsoft Office, but it's really good. We also have a science and math category. Nothing is here except LibreOffice Math. And then the settings, we have the Synaptic Package Manager, which is a standard on Debian-based distributions. Uh, this is a kind of a graphical package manager. It's not graphical in terms of you don't get screenshots and fancy graphics or anything, but it is a very neat little package manager, very powerful. It lists all of the programs that are available in the Debian repositories and seduction repositories if they have any of their additional repositories enabled here. But you can search packages, you can go through the list, and you can actually do a proper search by clicking the search button over here. We can search for example, HTOP. If HTOP wasn't already installed, HTOP is already installed. I know it's already installed because it has the checkbox, but if it didn't have the checkbox, I could actually check it on and then go to mark all upgrades and you know run an update of the system and it would install all the things that I would have checked on when I went and searched for programs to install. Synaptic Package Manager, again, it's available on Debian and all Debian-based distributions. You can get it on Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based distributions. It's typically, if I'm going to put a graphical package manager on a Debian or an Ubuntu based system. Synaptic Package Manager is typically the one I go get. Also, we have a system category. This is going to be a lot of your standard KDE system application. So you're going to have things like uh, the Discover Software Center. Uh, you're going to have Dolphin, of course, it's KDE's file manager, a really nice file manager. It's got a lot of dependencies and it's very closely tied to KDE, the desktop environment. So uh, Dolphin is not one of these file managers people typically use outside of KDE Plasma. I, I wish <laughs> you know it didn't have so many KDE dependencies because I'd probably use Dolphin you know, in some of my window managers and things, but it just pulls in too many dependencies. Also under system, we already saw that it had HTOP installed. Let's go ahead and launch HTOP and let's see what we're using as far as system resources. It looks like we're using a little bit of CPU, 5%, 9%. It's fluctuating a little bit. We shouldn't be really using too much CPU because we're not doing anything CPU intensive at the moment. Now, I do have a few things sitting down here in the sys tray because I opened some things earlier and didn't close them. Let me close some of the stuff. The Juke uh, audio player was still running. Now, as far as memory, I gave this virtual machine 6 gigs of RAM to use. It is using 2 gigs of RAM. So that is interesting as well, using a lot of RAM. Uh, more than I would expect. Now, sometimes uh, high RAM usage could just depend on the file system type that it's using. Some file systems are better at using your RAM than others. So just because it's using a lot of RAM is not necessarily a bad thing. It could be a good thing. It could be that whatever file system they're using is just really good at putting some of that RAM to use. Uh, let me open up the terminal. So this is console with a K. Let's actually find out what file system type they were defaulting to because I did the standard Calamari's installation, the automatic install. I just let seduction do its thing. I'm not sure what file system they're using. So I'm going to run a lsbok space dash f and let's see what we're doing. We are using extend4 as the file system. So extend4 is not one of those file systems that tends to suck up a lot of RAM. You know, usually you would expect maybe ButterFS, certainly ZFS can use a lot of RAM. So it's interesting that it is using extend4 and using this much RAM. So, you know, we've got some stuff going on in the background, some background services that are really uh, using a lot more RAM than I would expect. Let's see how many programs are installed out of the box on Seduction KDE. So let's do an apt list space dash I for installed. So what this is, it's going to list out all the programs that are installed that the apt package manager knows about. It's gonna print these on line by line, each package, line by line. So what we could do here is up arrow and pipe that information into WC, which is the word count program, tack on dash L for a line count rather than a word count. Let's see how many lines of output are in apt list dash I, because however many lines of output are in that, that's how many packages are installed on the system. 
Oh, let's run that and you can see 2,934 packages. It's a lot of stuff installed, right? I'm also going to check on Pipewire. I'm assuming they're defaulting to Pipewire these days. So where is Pipewire? You can see and there is the location to the Pipewire binary. Now for those wondering about things like flat packs and snaps, do they have any of that installed out of the box? I wouldn't assume, but let's do a quick where is flat pack and see flat pack is available. You have user bin flat pack here. Is there anything installed? Installed as a flat pack. Flat pack list. No, it's empty. So flat pack is installed. No flat packs have been installed. If you want to use it, it's there for you. If I did a uh, where is snap D, uh, snap is not installed. Of course, you could always install snap D by doing a sudo apt install snap D. Let's close out of the terminal here. One last thing I want to do is I want to go and search for about. I'm going to do about this system. I'm sure people will ask about what exact version of KDE Plasma we are on. Again, this is a 10 day old ISO. I don't know if KDE has had any point releases since then, but as of the release of this ISO, this was Plasma version 6.2.4 using KDE Frameworks version 6.8.0, Qt version 6.7.2. One last thing I want to check, you guys know I'm going to right click on the desktop and I'm going to go to desktop and wallpaper and let's see if they have any cool wallpapers available to us. It looks like as far as their own wallpapers, as far as the branded wallpapers, all we have is what we're looking at now, although it looks like they may have light and dark versions of this wallpaper. We have the Nexus wallpaper, which is like a default plasma wallpaper. We have Shine On, which is shine on without the Christmassy logo and then we have shine on with the Christmas logo if I move my head so this is the one with the uh, Santa Claus hat and this is the one without and other than that not much else to look at here as far as wallpapers unfortunately Let's go ahead and apply that so there you have it a very quick and cursory first look at seduction uh, the latest release of seduction codenamed shine on now seduction again uh, do you necessarily need to install seduction no for those of you that are comfortable installing debian especially debian unstable if that's what you're trying to use uh, if you can go through like the expert installation that i did on camera just a couple of weeks ago i showed you guys how to install debian unstable you certainly can go that route but if you want something a little bit more straightforward because honestly the seduction calamari's installation process is very easy to run through you can be up and running in under 10 minutes so it's certainly an option and of course with seduction you know they're going to tweak things a little bit right it's not going to necessarily be all standard default packages and default configurations they're going to tweak some things they're going to make some sensible defaults that you may find to your liking now before i go i need to thank a few special people i need to thank the producers of this episode matt steve armor dragon cap caveman darloff daedalus george lee methos Ariane. Paul, Peace Arch and Fedora, Realities for Lust, Red Prophet, Roland, Wargento, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick first look at seduction would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because... I don't have any corporate sponsors. I depend on you guys, really. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.